Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. In this week's overview brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines, Jim and I get you ready for a matchup against the Tennessee Titans. I sit down with Pro Bowl quarterback Derek Carr and head coach John Gruden joins Chris Townsend in the film room to break down the upcoming opponent. All that and more on the Silver and Black Show starting right now. You know, they're, they're young and fast and, and long on defense, very active, very good front safeties that are physical, uh, corners that'll, that'll press and play aggressive. They uh, offensively, very good back, and you know, it's going to be an elite back in this league. They, they have tight ends. You know, they're throwing 200 passes to their running backs and their tight ends, so that'll be a huge key. It's a tough defense. They play fast. They play strong. They want to penetrate up front. You know, big guys on the edges, long guys that, that play extremely hard, and uh, they try to get after the passer, so um, definitely going to have to uh, contend with them all day. This team is 4-1 and one in the Oakland Coliseum. They, uh, they only give up 20 points a game. Their offense averages 360 yards a, a game at, at the Oakland Coliseum. They, um, they're plus four in their, in their turnover margin. The defense has forced eight turnovers in those five games, and the offense has only turned it over four times. So um, it, it's going to be a heck of a challenge. Week 14, the Raiders coming off of two tough losses, but they bring it back home to face the Tennessee Titans. Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. As always, I'm your host, Nicole Zalumis, alongside our two-time Super Bowl champion, Jim Plunkett. Jim, as the Raiders return home, they're facing a team that's doing well, but they've had a lot of success against the Titans in the past. Uh, they have. They're 3-0. Uh, Derek uh, Carr is against the uh the Titans, and you know, hopefully that'll carry over. But a lot of different changes over the years, different players, uh, different schemes. So you know, it's, it's like a brand new ball game. For Derek Carr, when you're coming off of a performance or two performances like he did in the cold weather, you come back home, you look at your stats, you feel comfortable against a team like this? Uh, I don't think that necessarily holds true. You know, uh, bad, tough performances over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you just got to you know rethink your game. Make sure you're not making the same mistakes you've made in the last couple of games. And everybody's got to play a little bit better. Uh, and I, you know I think that you know they still have a chance to make the playoffs, and that should really be in their thinking uh, come Sunday. Jim, let's look at the other signal caller in Ryan Tannehill because the Titans made a switch, and it was a good switch for them. They're five and one in the last six games. What are you seeing out of him? Well, I think he's playing uh, very well. He's got he's got experience behind him. You know, five and one as you mentioned. 24 TDs tied for second most in the last six games. Highest uh, yards per play at 8.5. His completion percentage is 72%, which is tremendous in this league. Yeah, most rushing touchdowns. They're moving the ball offensively, doing a lot of good things and making things happen. And, you know, sometimes when you make a change like that, the guy's fresh, he comes in, and you don't, don't have a book on him this year. So he's out there performing well. Well, we've talked about it on the show before. It always helps when you have a solid running back. Derrick Henry is coming off of a monster game and just continues to play at a high clip. How do you contain him? Well, you know, you find a way to do it. Uh, maybe you bring blitzes uh, to try and stop him. But yeah, as you mentioned, three, three giant games, 188 yards, 159 yards, and 149 yards. So, you know, he's really on a roll. The offensive line is doing a great job, which sets up the play action pass for Tannehill. And I think that's part of his success right now, the play action, faking to Derrick Henry and, and getting the ball to his receivers. And they've got a lot of big plays down the field as well. And that running game, you know, helps that. How do you flush the last two weeks as you enter this game against the Titans, knowing, I mean, we talked about Derek Carr's success against the squad, but the offense as a whole, how do they get it back together? Well, you know, it's, that was last week's game. You know, you have to forget about it and, and concentrate on the upcoming game. Uh, it's not always easy to do, but, you know, some of that's a coach's responsibility. The players have to take it on their shoulders, focus on this game. They have a tremendous chance to still make the playoffs. Uh, there's only, they're going to only play one team with a winning record, and that's this one uh, going into the last four games. So, you know, find a way to get it done, and, uh, you know, hopefully – they'll be able to do that in the next four games. I feel silly even saying that this is a must-win game because every game is a must-win, but you had mentioned the playoffs, and this absolutely is. Oh, yeah, they are. All four of them uh, to make the playoffs. I think they're going to have to win all four. Uh, and, you know, despite their record at 6-6, six and six, they've got a great opportunity uh, to forge ahead and possibly sneak in. All right, Jim. Well, we're going to take a break here on the Silver and Black Show, but coming up next, Coach sits down with Chris Townsend to break down some film. All right, Coach, you're 6-6. Six and six. we got four more games, two at home, two on the road, and you're still in this thing. Yeah, we got to play a lot better, obviously. Uh, we're excited about being home again. 
Uh, hopefully the weather's a little bit better, but make no excuses. We have not played good football in the last two weeks, and we got to play a lot better to get this win. Yeah, you talk about rebounding from two tough losses, one in New York and one in Kansas City. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. We had four straight games that went right down to the last uh, play of the game, and then we had two tough road outings in tough weather that we're not a, a, a lot of experience playing in. Uh, but we got to grow from that. We got to show some mental toughness. We've got some injuries, and we have a great opponent coming in here in the black hole, so we're excited about that. You know, one guy I know you're really proud of, Josh Jacobs. First Raiders rookie running back to go over 1,000 yards, and he's been doing it banged up. How proud are you of him? Well, I'm really proud because he's done it, as you said, with a sore shoulder. Uh, but most of the backs that play in this league have to go through this. But he has done a great job of competing, preparing. Uh, behind the scenes, he's been a leader. He's got a, a great future here, Townie. And I brought you a Josh, Josh Jacobs Rookie of the Month pin. I know you. <laughs> I appreciate that, Coach. Thank you, you very much. That's one of the good things I have. Today. I'll be wearing this on Sunday on the sidelines. You know, when you talk about bad weather, when you talk about rain, you talk about snow. How does it change your play calling? Well, it can't change it dramatically. Uh, you know, you have to adapt. Obviously, everybody does. We did not catch the ball very good against the Jets. We had five drops. Uh, the cold weather perhaps had something to do with it. I'm a big believer, though, you know, experience is a great teacher. We don't practice in the cold. We don't practice in blustery wind. Uh, maybe we got to find a way uh, to practice, maybe go to some of these places and give our guys a chance to get used to it so they can uh, improve at it. But experience will be, uh, I think, helpful to these guys in the future. And um, it doesn't really impact the play selection a lot but it does at times based on how hard the wind is blowing. And right now, this is, this is the biggest game right here, and the Titans come in playing good football. Ryan Tannehill, since he's taken over, he's the team's 5-1. and one. You knew him from your days back in ESPN, and he's kind of reemerged here in Tennessee. Well, he's an athlete, and he's found second life here in this offense. You can see him right here at the line of scrimmage. He's recognizing the coverage. He's audibling. Everybody thinks he's audibling to a run, but he's audible into a play-action pass. And when you have Derrick Henry, the play-action pass is a real problem. But he fakes the ball to Henry. He comes out to his right on a run-pass option. And don't forget, this guy played wide receiver at Texas A&M. He's got great wheels. He runs 4-5. or five. But uh, his ability, I think, Townie, in the pocket to keep plays alive and create unscripted offense has been a big winning edge for the Titans. You can see him right here. You see, he's... He's got nobody to throw to on rhythm, so he creates to his left. And on his left, he throws a dime. That's hard to coach right there. He's finally playing like the guy they thought was going to be the guy in Miami. Well, he's a guy that was thrusted into the starting role as a rookie in Miami, and he wasn't a real experienced player. Like I said, he played wide receiver at Texas A&M. I think Tennessee got a bargain. And what really helps him the most is their running game. Yeah. You know, when you're the quarterback of the Tennessee Titans, you can turn around and hand the ball to a legitimate beast. This Derrick Henry is a problem. He has home run speed. He's a tackle-breaking guy, and he is, I think, playing with tremendous stamina. He's, he's, he's got conditioning like you, Townie. Yeah. I mean, the guy will not get tired. <laughs> the more they give it to him, the longer the game goes, the better he gets. Uh, but this is one heck of a job here, putting Jacksonville away. And uh, not only can he run it, he can catch it. And they do a nice job with their screen game. So uh, Tannehill, Derrick Henry, and a very diverse defense. We'll need to play a lot better to get this one. And Henry has actually gotten better in cold weather. Experience. You know, experience I'm sure has helped him. And um, like I said, he is, he's, he's doing it all right now for the Titans. Rushing, receiving, picking up blitzes, and he's doing it for four quarters. You need to get your team back on track, and there's no better place to do it than the Oakland Coliseum. There's no doubt. You know, it's uh, been a tough year for us from a travel standpoint. You know, we've flown 45,000 miles. You know, there are teams in this division that haven't even thrown, haven't flown half of that. Yeah. Uh, so our team, uh, I think, benefits a lot by staying at home in their certain time zone and being able to, to wake up and go play in a Coliseum in front of their fans. We love it. Yeah, we haven't played a, a road game in the Pacific time zone this year. <laughs> I know. it's uh, It's been a lot of time in hotels. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like I said, you know, when you can – be a 6-6 six and six team, be in the race here in December. It's something we're very proud of. And uh, we're going to be playing without some guys this week once again. But uh, we need some young people to take advantage of these opportunities. And Raider Nation is going to be strong for you on Sunday. I know they will. Good to see you, Tom. Let's go get them, yeah. Coach. Thanks, man.
you know, especially two weeks in a row getting beat the way we got beat. It's like, come on, you know, we're better than that, right? And it's just so frustrating. It's annoying, really. But at the same time, we got to be real about what is still at stake for us. Like, yes, we got beat twice. Yes, it was terrible losses. But we could still, you know, we, we play some important games coming up, right? We play some teams that we need to play uh, in order to get to where we want to get. And so if we, you know, just want to hang our heads and sulk, we can do that. We can sit in a corner and do that. But that's never how I've been. And I don't think that that's how this group is. Just hearing the encouragement, uh, the encouraging words to each other, the young guys, very impressive. You know, no one cares about that right now. But that's important things to have happen because we have four games left. It's a lot of football. A lot of crazier things have happened. Win or lose, good or bad, an NFL quarterback understands and accepts the responsibility of the position. Although the Raiders have been struggling lately, veteran quarterback Derek Carr knows better than anyone that this is a week-to-week -week league. Here we are, week 14. The team is 6-6. Six and six. Playoff hopes still alive. Oh, yeah. As you sit here as a quarterback, as a leader, as a man, what is at stake this weekend? Uh, a lot, obviously. Um, you know, this is one of the teams that we have to beat uh, if you know we want to continue on this journey. You know, and continue on somewhat controlling what we can control, right? Because you don't win this one, you don't control a lot of things, right? right? We had two rough outings on the road, um, and it starts with me. You know, it starts with me. Uh, you know, doing better things, playing better for our team. Um, and I'm confident that you know, we'll do that here at home and uh, hopefully make another good home stand uh, to again put us in position for the playoffs. So when you look at the two losses, obviously very difficult losses, I know you study film a lot. What were the key issues that you identified from those? You know, to be honest, uh, just little things in the details. Um, you know, I'm never going to be someone that gives all of the answer, you know, but there's things that I look at for myself. Um, you know, you know, turning the ball over can't happen, you know. And I've always been someone to take care of the football. You know, that's been one of my favorite things to do since I've been a Raider is, and in college was take care of the football, then you have a chance to win, you know. Um, and in these last two games, the turnovers have really hurt us. And uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. It just can't happen, yeah. you know. So just taking a look at those and seeing, oh, man, I could have done this or I could have done that. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, people make good plays and you're like, dang, you know, like, they got me, you know, it sucks. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to say that as a competitor, uh, but uh, it happens. But I also know that we've had a lot more good plays this year than bad ones, and uh, we're, still, we're still good at this thing. We just gotta get back on track and do it. Well, after week 12, and you had referenced this, Coach Gruden saying it's only gonna get harder. Yeah. So what steps do you take personally to get through that fire? Oh, the, the hardest part, uh, when when you're going through something like that, and I've learned in my six years with how we just joked about before this, how one day you're the greatest, mm -hmm. one day get rid of him. You know right. what I mean? We what have you done for me lately? This this is the NFL nowadays, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and one thing that I've learned, which I'm so thankful, I'm blessed to be in the position I'm in, and how uh, in my sixth year where I can just continue to do my process. I don't have to change anything because when you have, you know, uh, your best day throwing the football and then you go out and you have one of your worst days throwing the football and your process was, was the same and then you, you make the little, there's a little things you can correct in there. It's like, I'm gonna do exactly what I've been doing the whole time. You know, and it hasn't changed since I got in the NFL. For me, I just kinda just be me. Yeah. Um, but I could really help some of these young guys that are like, wait, why they, they don't like me now? You know, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, you know, just uh, you know, helping even Josh. Like Josh, you're rushing. I mean, he's the, one of the best players in the NFL. Right. We're seeing flashes of brilliance from Josh. I mean, various people. From all these guys. Positions. When you look at those moments, the highs that we've seen this yeah. season, what kind of promise does it bring when it comes to this organization? Oh, our future is very bright. You know, Mr. Davis used to talk about that, right? Um, the future is very bright. But I tell him, I was like, hey, what's going to happen if you go out there and go two games for 30 yards? You know, and you fumble twice. The, uh oh, oh, what's wrong? You know, mm -hmm. don't ever. I said, you know, you, you tell these guys, just do you, do you, because let's be real, it's the NFL. Maybe that'll happen someday to them. We hope not. Right. Right. But it's the NFL. Well, you, it's always stood out to me that you have this positive mindset mm -hmm. and you're really, you know, focused. Do you ever get that angry chip on your shoulder, like, I need to protect my pack, or is it always like, let's stay even keeled? No, no, I get angry. Yeah. I do. I struggle with that, you know. Uh, 
especially during football games. You know, I, my dad said the best. He's, he saw me on the field at a game one time, and he's like, yeah, I didn't even recognize you. You know what I mean? And he's like, it was kind of, you were angry. You know, you were kind of a little upset, you know? And I was like, I just care so much, yeah. you know? And when I put that helmet on, it means so much to me. And so this place, this shield means so much to me. Um, this is home. This is the only team I want to play for my entire life, you know? And, um, you know, you try your best through the hard times to just stay even keel. Yeah. Um, but it's hard, you know, uh, when, when, when you know and expect so much more. For you personally, what's on the line right now? Personally, is I want to be in the playoffs, you know. Um, everyone picked us to win three games. Everyone picked us to win four games. Oh, they might, they might be all right, win five. Um, and we've already proven all of them yeah. wrong, you know. And as we just continue to prove people wrong, uh, which I couldn't care less about either, you know, I want to prove the people right that picked us, you know. Um, you know, I sit here and I think, well, why not just go to the playoffs, yeah. you know. You know, why, what better thing to do for our team as we're in the second year of a rebuilding, you know, stage uh, to really you know, go win 10 games, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when no one thought we could because then that just gives more confidence to our guys, which they already have. Um, but the more games we can win down this stretch, it just gives more confidence to our guys going forward. Welcome back to the Silver and Black Show. Week 14 action around the league. Why don't we take a look at some of the games that we'll be keeping an eye on. And, of course, we want the fans to take a look at. Starting with the Colts at the Buccaneers. The Bucs are favored by three points, and they've been heating up lately. They have. Jameis Winston's playing a little bit better, uh, putting some points on the board. And uh, Obviously, uh, we need the uh, Buccaneers to knock off the Colts. It would help our, our position greatly. Looking at the Steelers and the Cardinals, Steelers favored by two and a half points. We now have Devlin Hodges has been named the starter instead of Mason Rudolph. What do you see there? Well, you know, once again, the Cardinals are going to have an uphill battle against the Steelers. Steelers, especially defensively, are extremely good, but they're coming in with their third-string quarterback. That might help the Cardinals knock off the Steelers. Yeah, well, the Steelers' defense, top 10 in every major defensive category, including fifth fewest yards per game and most turnovers in the league with 33. Pretty impressive. I'd say the marquee matchup of the week, a lot of people are going to be looking at the Chiefs at the Patriots. The Patriots are favored by three points. Chiefs are 5-1 and one on the road. Patriots are 5-0 and oh at home. How do you see this one playing out? Uh, they pretty much know each other and what, what they can do against each other. Uh, obviously, we would like the Patriots to win uh, to give a, get us a little bit closer to a v division title, which is obviously tough since they've won the, the two games against the Raiders, but it can be done. Both teams are averaging 26 points right now, so you expect that to be similar? Uh, to a certain extent, although the Patriots have had trouble scoring in the last few weeks, haven't put any points on the board. Uh, so maybe offensively they're struggling a little bit, but you know they're all always capable of coming up with, uh, with a big game, and Kansas City tends to give up a lot of points. The Patriots have won 21 straight games at home. I mean, eventually it has to end, right? You would think, you know, and hopefully it'll be this weekend. <laughs> all right, well, coming up, don't you have a special birthday week that's happening right now? Uh, nothing special about it. I just have another birthday another coming up. Another yeah, birthday. On the 5th, yes. Well, Jim, we want it on behalf. Uh, of all of Raider Nation, Silver and Black Productions wish you a very happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. Do we want to sing happy birthday? No, you birth don't. No? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jim, so make a wish. I have. You have? Do you want to blow out the candles? Awesome. All right, well, thank you all. Well, thank you, ladies, so much for coming on the show today so you could help us celebrate Jim Plunkett's birthday on behalf of Raider Nation. That's going to do it for this edition of the Silver and Black Show. Thanks for joining us, and go Raiders.